and a pen or a pencil next to you. I'm Josh. I'm from Bethesda, Maryland, which is the Newton of Washington, DC. And uh, we are now we are now located in Wellesley for work. I'm Eliana. I am from Rochester, New York, but also am in Wellesley, Massachusetts. We've been seeing a lot of you Beth Elohim um, leaders, which makes us very happy. And feel free, anybody, we can either introduce yourself out loud, throw it in the chat so other people can see it. I'm Susanna Grant. I'm from Temple Beth Israel in Fresno, California. Ooh. And I'm Judy Kropp. I'm in, I live in Garrison, New York, and I teach in Croton, New York at Temple Israel of Northern Westchester. Wow, we're from all over the country here today. Thank you for joining. We'll just wait one more minute. And if you're just joining us, so um, it would be great if you'll have a pen and a pence, a pen and a paper or a pencil and paper. One of those would work. We're not used to having them, but it would be great. And if you want to introduce yourself or where you're located, open the camera. So we'll see you for a second. Um, it would be great. If you also feel like you need the camera off, that's fine too. And yeah, Feet, I'm realizing that you are not a co-host yet. There we go. Great. Well, I think we're going to get started. Um, and I'm sure there'll be lots of, of people popping in. We had quite a few people register from literally all over the country, both coasts, the middle of the country. It was really astounding. So um, I am so thrilled that everybody is here. So welcome. Um, actually, I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Um, so as you can see right here, um, we are going to be learning about designing and redesigning programs. Um, if you are new to our March Road program, this is part of Hebrew College's Center for um, Jewish Professional Learning and Leadership. And I am so incredibly honored to introduce my colleague, and my friend and my teacher, Yafit Megidish, who is joining us from Berkeley, California. Um, so Yafit will be engaging us in the process of designing and redesigning program through really unleashing creativity and innovative thinking um, with our staffs. So I'm just letting people in at the same time, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, just a reminder that the session is being recorded and um, feel free to go onto our website afterwards and share it with your staff if you would like to. Um, let me tell you um, just a little bit about Yafit and then I will turn it over to her. So Yafit was born in Israel and moved to Berkeley seven years ago. She is a veteran educator with a master's in educational management systems from Hebrew University and over 24 years experience in the field. She began her career working with children from low income families and at risk youth. Um, and in 2001, uh, Yafi joined the Bronco Weiss Institute for Development of Thinking, also known as BWI. Um, where she worked to train educators, develop programs from leadership and creative thinking, and implement pedagogy with children from second to eighth grade. Um, before moving to the U.S., Yafit spent 10 years working at BWI schools as both an educator and a school principal. Yafit is now the executive director of Studio 70 in Berkeley, California, 
um, which is a Jewish educational center whose aim is to transform the landscape of Jewish learning opportunities across um, North America. And on that note, it is uh, my honor um, and my absolute joy to turn this over to Yafit. Thank you so much, Susan. I'm really glad and excited to be here with you all. Um, thank you for the introduction. I kind of saved me a few minutes of, of laboring on that. Um, I'm, I'm really glad to be here and, and I kind of first want to give you the agenda for this session so you'll all know what are we going to do in the next hour, um, how are we going to spend it. So as Susan said, this would be focusing on creative thinking and innovation in Jewish education. but it's mainly to really practice just one of the exercise that I tend to use with my team. So you can creative thinking feels for many people as something that is trading like, oh, I'm not used to it. I'm not good at that. I'm not creative. Yes. Wait, yeah, feet. I just want to jump in for a second. Um, that you're going in and out, and we're not able to see your screen. Is can everybody just give me, um, everybody a thumbs um, up if if you're able to hear your feet, or is she going in and out to the side? Okay, going in and out. I think I'm back now. Okay, excellent. I was kicked out for some reason. Okay. So we didn't hear much of what you said. Who cares? Okay. <laughs> um, I'll share my screen again and really hope that nothing will happen now. Um, so I don't know at what point you've lost me, but I will just go back to what I'm aiming to cover in this um, hour meeting that we have. So I'll start with who is in the room. Um, and, and for me, it's a basic to really get to know the people, but in this case, it will be mostly an exercise for you to use one of the creative tools and to really see how it feels, knowing that many people tend to say, I'm not creative thinker, I don't have it within me. Um, and, and my approach and belief for years is that all of us are creative thinker, all of us can think out of the box. It's a matter of stretching the muscle and just practicing over and over. Um, I'll talk a bit about who am I. Susan already did an incredible work. So I'll just mention things that are really like really related to this conversation. I'll go into examples of two programs that we have developed in the last two years and show two different process of um, the planning process. And then I'll give you time to practice um, creative thinking, something that I hope would be useful for you and we'll end up with ideas and tips for you to use at work. So pen and paper, now that's the time for that. Um, I'm going to give you four minutes now to build up your sandwich. You're going to introduce yourself by sandwich layers of who are you, uh, by object, by food you like, but by um, hobbies, whatever you feel that should be at that sandwich and represent you well. If you're not a really strong believer in your uh, drawing, so that's totally fine. You can just put layers of whatever boxes and just write with words. Um, and in the last minute, I'll give you a heads up, name it. So it will be very attractive on your menu. Um, you are going to share it in pairs and you have four minutes for that. I'll start the timer um, and just let you do the work. So four minutes, your sandwich.
Recording in progress. Richie, I saw that you were joining us again. Um, I'm trying to get my camera to function. function, function, function. Oh, um, so I gave about four minutes to create your own sandwich to introduce yourself. Um, you can see the instruction also on the slideshow. Um, I'll, we have two more minutes, so you have half of the time, but you still have time. And, and if you're not feeling like drawing, just like create layers and write it. If you're done drawing, don't forget to give a name to your sandwich. And we have about one minute, um, 20 seconds left. So you still need that. We have 20 seconds left. Okay. Um, as you all heard, timer rang. Um, I, I will say that about this exercise that I usually give five minutes. For some people, it feels forever. Um, and creative thinking needs space. Dafka, like in the place that we feel like, oh, it's so long. What am I doing right now? Um, as I said, stretch the muscle. What else can I bring? What else can I do? Um, so we're going to send you now to break our rooms um, in pairs. Um, I don't know, Josh and Eliana, maybe you will be already paired. <laughs> but um, what I will ask you to do is, is you'll have two and a half minutes for each one of you to share one minute, just like show your product, what have you done, the name of your sandwich. Um, but I, I really want you to also discuss how does it feel introducing yourself like that instead of going to the same titles of like, who am I, where I'm from, my job, I'm doing this, that I came from. Um, for some, it will feel very comfortable. For others, maybe not, I don't know, but just discuss that for a few minutes. Um, so Susan, are we ready to send them? Great, um, we'll bring you back in. So, and Joan, I just wanted to say welcome. And you. um, you're going to go into a breakout room and I am sure your partner is going to catch you up on exactly what we're gonna be sharing. I've, okay. I've actually been here, but I've been on my phone and unable to really manipulate. So I'm finally at the computer. Great, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna open all the rooms. I have quite one quick question for you. Wait a minute, hold on. Let me just um, turn, let me pause. I think we have everyone back. I'm seeing some laughter. <laughs> we're playing um, so before, geography. Before we we're just like geography. hear a bit from, sorry, Richie was saying something. I said, don't we always play Jewish geography when we start? 
<laughs> of course, of course. Um, I would love to see your sandwiches if you can just like hold it for. Oh, wow, Judy, they're so oh, mine. <laughs> no pictures. <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. Okay. Um, is anyone just willing to share some feelings or how was it for you or what you heard in your conversation? I think this is one of those classic don't let perfect be the enemy of good enough situations, because I don't know about you all, but my first thing is, you know, before you get to the existential, like, who am I really dot dot dot, but like, um, how do you encapsulate the whole of you? And then once I realized I'm not going to do a good job in that, I'm just going to put some stuff on and then just kept going. Like, I don't know, that's I found that it was it was I, as long as I said, this is not going to be the entirety of me and just going to be some of me, I felt okay. Which is great because that is exactly what you need. Like not no limitation in this um, exercise, which is really hard. Anyone else? If it's okay with Susanna, I'll just share that I loved the club. She did a club sandwich. I'm not sure I, when I'm thinking about it now that I exactly got the symbolism, but I, but I can imagine different. I can imagine different things. She said that fit into that, and I and I I just like that. I thought that was a creative way to do it. Uh, thank you, Richie. Um, I actually did make it as a sandwich. It was a veggie wrap. So first of all, it has to have a solid foundation so it doesn't fall apart and keep it all together. And it's not layers of, I mean, uh, classic layers, but it's all mixed and it blends into to each other and lots of veg vegetables. It sounds like you had fun. Yeah, we did. <laughs> okay, great. Um, um, I'll get back to it at the end, but really um, creating a culture in any place that I've led for the last 10, at least 15 years, um, creating a culture of creative thinking is one of my really strong habits. Um, any staff meeting, any development of an event will include some exercise, and I'll give a few examples at the end, of creative thinking. Making sure my staff is training themselves all the time to think out of the box. Every meeting will start like that. We have a problem, let's use the tool. We have just like a meeting to know each other, let's use the tool. Um, and it's become a habit for everyone and it doesn't feel so scary. So I'll, I'll get back to that at the end, but really just knowing that those small things makes a difference for, for our brain when we're developing that. Um, I'm going back to share my screen as much as I hate doing it because you never see everyone well. Um, and I will talk briefly about myself, but really Susan covered most of it just to, to put the focus on, on my work on creative thinking and innovation. Um, so the first thing to know is that I have four kids and four like four kids creates a lot of creativity. Um, I need to juggle a lot with them. So that's like my number one in, in the story. Um, I think that um, you all under, like you heard, I'm Israeli born and raised in Israel for um, 30 something years that I've been there and moved here seven years ago. Um, I think that really the first station in my life was working for Brankovice, which trained me in creating thinking and out of the box and using different kinds of tools. We were working with visible thinking of Project Zero. We were working with the six set of the Bono. Um, and then our work was mostly to train teachers in day school and help them to implement that in their curriculum. Um, so for three years, I was supporting elementary school. I was not a teacher yet, which each time when I tell that story, I feel bad about that. But I was training teachers doing that, um, realizing at one point I need to be a teacher. So then I went to really do my um, certificate and started working in a school that belonged to Bronco Wise. Um, I started working as a teacher. And after a few years, I became the head of school. One of the big influence of my work was um, a collaboration between everything I've learned from Branko Weiss and visiting the high-tech high school in San Diego. Um, I came back and shifted the whole school, stopped looking at our schedule in a regular way and, and I kind of break it into interdisciplinary learning. 
Um, it was all based on teaching for understanding, which means kids have performance of understanding instead of exams. Um, so it means project mostly. It means a lot of um, presentation for students in the classrooms and um, learning by, by themes and teams and not individual, like the world operate, at least to my opinion. Um, when I came back here and I first entered to EDA, which I will talk about in a minute, it was such an interesting reflection of my work at school, but in an after school environment. Um, and the challenges were different because if at the beginning in a day school, starting to break all of the walls and, and say, no, we wanna be an experiential school and we wanna do something and we wanna have joy when we're teaching in the classroom, which sometimes is hard in a day school, the case was the opposite in an after school program because all of that can happen, but how do we make like meaningful learning? Um, so I, I want to introduce you to your 70 that I have been the ED for the last two and a half years. I was the education director um, for five years. It's been a long time that I've been in Studio 70. So our flag program, EDA, um, that's our after school program in Berkeley and San Francisco. We have um, 80 students in both of those um, sites. It's a full service Jewish after school. We're centered around, we have learning centers, experiential learning. Um, we teach Hebrew, immersive Hebrew, modern Hebrew and um, Judaic studies. And we have kids coming from K to fifth grade, two to five days a week. Um, so that's Eda. I can see some pictures of experience of what we have done with them lately. So Yafit, I just want to yes. jump in for a second. We're still seeing the who am I photo. I just want to. That's not good. Okay. So you know what I'm going to do, Yafit? I think I'm going to share my screen. And so that you can focus on, um, uh, on teaching, because I know okay. how it's, it's really hard to navigate both. Can everybody see my screen? Great. So now awesome. you can see it. And then you'll just tell me when you want me to switch it. That would be perfect. Yeah. So so this is a DA. Um, this is a program that exists now for 11 years in Berkeley. Um, as I said, I started working specifically at EDA and um, shifted to, an e to be an ED for the last two and a half years. That's where we've kind of added new programs. So you can move to the next slide. Um, We've really hoped and wanted to have middle school stay with us after they're leaving EDA. And that's how we started three new programs. I will talk about two of them is the one that are highlighted. Um, so that's our Gesher, the new middle school programs. Yotzot Makom, which is creating space. This is our new girls leadership program for anyone who is identified as a female, Berkeley, um, and Jewish D&D. &D. That's our second program. And the third one is Midor Ledor. Um, teens and grandparents program. And I will um, talk about those two later on. So you can move to the next slide. And then the third piece of our K to 12 right now is Midrasha. Uh, Midrasha was existing program for many years in the East Bay. Um, we merged a year and a half ago and that's why we created the Gesher and we've kind of added things to the menu of Midrasha. So Midrasha now offer three programs. One is text and cereal, just as simple as it sounds, eating cereal and learning text. The second one is Ikar, which is the core of Jewish values and they're dealing a lot with their own identity. And the third one is Adracha, it's leadership and the Madrichimot program, um, which most of them are working for EDA. Um, so we are kind of ending and closing the um, edges between those two programs. Um, we can move on. So I'm, I'm going to talk now about what are the two steps that we work or I work um, when creating a new program. And then I will focus on two examples. Um, two steps, first, um, for any program that I've created, there is a there, there is a personal trigger, my kids. Uh, but my kids is a code name for for your audience, and and for me it means 
Um, I'm meeting with parents in the program or out of the program. Um, last year, I had a lot of meeting with Israeli families trying to understand why aren't they joining my program? Like, how do I bring them? What do they need, really? Um, meeting with teens, asking them questions. I have a lot of coffee and meetings with kids. I'm having the young kids come to hot cocoa with me and talk about what else are they excited about. Um, as understanding really instead of guessing, I feel like many times we're kind of just um, thinking that we know, but when we talk with them, we understand that that's not exactly what they needed. So that's the first step. Once I kind of identify that, then I will have a brainstorm usually with my staff and ask some essential questions about the need. So it will be broader than just we identify the need. So I'll get into the first example of Midor Le Dor, which was uh, two and a half years ago. It started during COVID, so it's kind of easy to understand the environment of that. First step was seeing I observed my kids and their grandparents grandparents staying at home, COVID reality, isolated. Um, I also observed that they're struggling having meaningful conversation with each other. It was always like, a call tov, can, everything is good, yes, no, like really short answers. Um, and I really struggled with the question of how do you make that more meaningful? Um, so I sat down with my team and I said, look, we have this amazing opportunity right now. We're online. Um, how do we strengthen those relationships? How do we create space for grandparents to pass on their heritage, um, connect between them? And we decided to start with the pilot. We invited grandparents of EDA, of our after school, to join to our weekly program. And they learned together the parasha for 20 minutes, and then we divided them into families, and they had a prompt, and kids will work on something, and grandparents will just share with them, and they will spend time for 20 minutes. We did that for six weeks. Um, and then I met the grandparents because I really wanted to hear how was it for them? What were they excited about? What would they like, like how they envision it continuing or they had enough, um, heard all of their needs, spoke with the kids, heard their needs. And then we said, okay, so we know now we continue with the da. It was great. They want to do more. Um, let's think now about the teens, knowing that our madrichimot like were online and they're, so isolated. And with them, we were trying to think, we don't want to do the parasha. We really want to teach them how to create meaningful conversations. So we we're focusing on allowing them sharing stories, grandparents really bringing on their stories and their values and, and their tone into the conversation. And the second part of that, and same goes for the teens. And the second part was giving them tools for conversations, asking why questions, like really practicing with them on how do you ask why question when you an open question. So the kid will have a really long answer for that. Um, we're practicing with them different kind of scenarios. So they had like time and, and it was just a joy seeing that. We started with three groups in Berkeley, in San Diego and in LA. Um, and of course, at the end, we need to fulfill my need. So we opened a group of Israeli grandparents and teens from United States. Um, and this program continue working. We're now shifting into in-person. Um, and since not all of the grandparents are here around us, so we're shifting to a program that will be any elder that we can in our community that will have relationship with our teens and they will have mean like conversation about so many things that we are offering them. Um, so that's one way of planning process. I will go to the second one and then I'll stop to see if anyone have questions. Um, so if we can move to the next one. Okay. So the second program is Yatsrot Makom, which is, um, really my joy. We've opened it not long ago, Yotzrot Makom, creating space. Um, first step again, my daughters, uh, seeing them growing with uh, a lack of female leaders in their life, um, understanding that we need to keep on doing working on, on empowering women, females, um, and there was another observation that we have is that in our high school program, there are not a lot of um, girls, which we found really interesting, but we started to think, so what are, what are the questions? How do we 
create a pipeline to the high school program. How are we not a Bnei Mitzvah program? We're not doing that. We're not a synagogue. We have 70% of our family affiliated, 30 are not. Um, how do we empower girls in Jewish space? What's the difference between us and, and girl garage next to us or girls leadership that is in Oakland? We ask all those questions and then um, we can stop sharing the screen and now I can just see everyone. Um, and then we've used one of the tools. So I have, I'm using tons of cards. That's, that's something that I really love having always in the office, different kind of cards, visual cards, um, had cards of females from the Torah, put them all on the table, had my team sit around it. Um, we started taking each one of them and thinking what are um, our takeaway from each one of those females characters. So we were really discussing Pua and Yudit, like really going everywhere. Um, what are the takeaways? And then we kind of identify a really long list and fleshed out what are the things that we would love to teach our, our girls from that list. Um, so then we know the content. And now how are we going to do that? And we said, okay, so we have all those females character. Each one of them was operating in a different kind of role. One was a Nevi'a, one was a Me'ale. There's like so different roles. How do we think of different roles in the world? And then we started thinking of different media. We want them to use power tools. We want them to be photography. We want them, so, so we kind of identify different roles and we match between character and tools or media. So the program now is that every month they're meeting a female character from the Torah, and then they learn about her in Chavruta, and they design their takeaway, which is a personal takeaway from that character, by different medias each time. Um, and we've started this program with 10 girls right now, um, middle school girls, um, trying, it was like we are writing curriculum, we we're trying to get a grant for that to expand this program just um, further to other communities. So um, two program, different process of working, starting from the same point of, of identifying need into pushing ourselves to think in a creative way, to find opportunities to really use it um, and to expand it. Um, I'll stop for like two minutes to see if anyone have questions, um, and then I'll move on to let you practice. I have a question about identifying the need. So there's kind of two different sides that, uh, that I'm bumping against. How do you identify needs that aren't spoken, like that they don't realize they need met until they're met? And then also, how do you make sure that the needs that are identified are real needs shared by others and not simply the loudest in the room? Thanks. Um, so when I said I'm looking at my kids, of course, it's, you know, it's one kid. So I need to make sure there is not just my kid need or me as a parent. And when I said conversation, it's not a plural, it's not a singular, but it's plural. Um, I really go to conversation with at least 10 parents. And, and I'm, so for example, if I spoke with Ada parents, because we wanted to do changes in the program, I tried to talk to really a wide range from my Orthodox family to the, to the uh, unaffiliated, like really talking at least to three from each kind of a group. Um, same goes when I met Israeli parents for coffee. So I had like three meetings with small groups of four each time. Um, and, you know, even Though not necessarily people will know to articulate their need, I'm, I'm trying to be a very good listener, not talking during those meetings and really kind of then go back and say, this is what I heard. Let's see what, what really exists in that place. Um, so I heard from Israeli families, we want Hebrew, Nekuda, that's it. The second thing I heard from Israeli families, we want our events to be like Israel. I was like, Okay, then I, I also had questions of, does it fit my program? Is it really something that I um, can do? I'm interested. Maybe I don't want to be an Israeli center right now. But what I realized from those conversations was that I need to create some kind of a an, um, sub program in my program. So now Israelis have a Wednesday, which is really strong Hebrew, Chugim and everything. Um, so they're very excited about that day. 
And then we are also trying to say, maybe we should like just have a parent connector that will have event just for Israelis because they also need that as a community, but we'll also have the whole community get together. Um, I hope I'm answering your question, but it's, I think it's really that work and it's a legwork, but it's, it's, I think it's worth it because once you identify it well, um, you see the reaction and get the feedbacks from the community. Any other questions before we move on? I'm curious how you enlist people in these conversations. Um, my observation is that um, director can put out um, invitations. I'm open to coffee anytime, anytime, please come see me and not a big response. Tapping people, personal. Um, so I usually try to find one person that I know out of the community, for example, um, you know, when I'm talking to parents from my community, it's easier. I reach out to one and I'm asking them if I can meet them or grandparents were in the program already, right? So it was kind of easy. I said, I'm setting up a Zoom instead of the parasha learning. Um, but I'm doing just like very personal outreach to one person and asking, can you bring two more with you so we can sit together? Um, and even with the Israeli, which could seem like very easy because I'm Israeli, which was not easy at all because I wanted to reach out to the people that are not my friend. Um, so I really looked for who can you connect me with and then gathered a group together um, and then they connected me to another group. Thanks. Sure. Um, yeah, Judy. Yeah, this is so fascinating because just recently this year for the first time, I actually have Israeli kids or the children of Israelis in my class along, this is in my fifth grade class, along with kids who, um, you know, they're, they're just starting this year maybe, and so they have zero Hebrew, and then I have kids who maybe hear Hebrew at home or whatever, but the parents are dying to get together and the parents are dying to help their kids connect with each other with Hebrew, so this is fascinating. That was one thing. Another thing was this, um, like the the taking a character from from the Bible and uh, sort of exploring this character and having the kids react to the character in in different ways, like you know photography or I don't know cut out of magazines or make a big poster about I don't know a Malkat Esther or Pua uh, Shifra you know Yehudit or whatever. I mean now we're Hanukkah, so talking about Yehudit and chopping off the head and all this good gory yummy stuff that fifth graders love. So um, I was just wondering like. Uh, do you ah oh, do you work on like character traits like gvura or um I that, uh, like uh, certain things like you know talk about well I don't want to you know steal your program yeah. or anything but I was just wondering no, no, no. what you focus on with these different characters from the Bible. So we actually didn't want to choose what are we focusing on. We really want them to have the ability to. The impression, you know, they were learning about each one of them, and we chose the one that not all of us know. Like we all know Esther, we all was like, let's focus on the one that we like deny. Like we 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 never speak about her, right? So we we chose those one, and we kept it open for them to learn about them, and then say, this is my takeaway from this person. Um, and my daughter, of course, is in the program. So last week she was coming home and talking about Ruth and Naomi, which we all spoke about, but she suddenly brought this whole different perspective because for her, it was something else that she was really excited about. Um, and and they were, you know, so just kind of that. And then also pushing them to, to use, we wanted when we were thinking of gender also to use spaces that they're not used to. So power tool, for example, they're going to use that in the next unit. Um, that's not a place that necessarily feels so comfortable for some of the girls in our program, which we we also want to push them out of their zones, their, their safe zone, um, if I will say. Um, I want us to get to some practice, so I'll move us forward if that's okay. Um, and I'm, I'm going to kind of give you an exercise for, we'll take about 10 minutes for that. Um, next slide. Great. Um, so this is another one of the tools that I've been using. Um, I will ask you to think of either an event that you want to plan in the future, something that would be useful for you. Hanukkah is very close, so probably not Hanukkah, but it could be in a community event, it could be around the Chag and holiday, it could be a staff meeting that you want to be different staff meeting. 
Um, and you'll just take a minute to think about that. Um, after you will identify that, we'll send you to two breakout rooms. Um, you'll all share your events and you'll have to choose as a group just one to practice on. Um, after you choose that one, you'll have to choose a picture all together from those four pictures. So we have a giraffe, fish, goldfish, uh, playground, and the ocean. And you'll choose one of those and you'll write at least 10 qualities of the animal or the place. Um, and I'm saying at least because once you're, if you got to 10 very easily, push yourself. Whenever you're stuck, push yourself. Like if it's going too easy, two more. If you're stuck, two more. Always, that's the rule. Like two more at least um, really push yourself. And you'll finish doing that. And then you start thinking about the event and using those qualities and insights. So for example, um, last event we created, we used the ocean and it was like, it's blue, it's deep, you know, whatever you brought up. Um, and just from the blue, we started kind of developing this idea of the decoration for the whole event, but it all like shifted as we were moving forward with each kind of um, quality or insight that we had about that um, place or animal. So before we send you, I'll check in if you have question about this exercise, and I will also put in the chat um, the link to the slideshow if you want to go back to this um page so you can have it um and also have it for later on i'll go over the rest of there is not more on that slideshow so um 10 minutes before we go i just want you to have a, um, an event in your head that you can share with the group so we'll take like 30 seconds for that and i and i will say before i'm sending you i i already said it at the beginning but time is crucial for creative thinking um, sometimes it's great to do something in two minutes because we want to pressure that, that uh, muscle, right? Sometimes it's good to give that muscle a time to really, really stretch all the way. Um, and yes, it was good that you went to the next one because those are like important rules. Um, when you're doing this exercise and coming up with ideas, suspend any kind of judgment. There is no conversation of, oh, no, we can't do that. In your staff meeting, especially when you're coming up with ideas, this is crazy, we don't have the money, all of those out of the room, we are not having them. Um, look for as many options as you can, strive for a regional one. The craziest one are the better, even though it, in the end, it might not be realistic, but you will take something out of that. And when you are done doing all of that and you are stuck, combine. Um, I had this idea, you had that, let's just combine them now into one thing. So just kind of having those rules in your head. Um, if you have an event in your head, just thumbs up so we can send you to a breakout room or I will be silent now so you can think about it. Um, okay, I think we'll send you, it will be less than 10 minutes, but it's, uh, it's just a start of a practice. So Susan, if you're ready, I think we can. And I will jump in. Okay, I, I'll and join. Han? I just, we had somebody new join us. Yeah, I'll join one of the rooms. Okay, so Han is in room um, two. Yeah, I see that, yeah. I land on a word. Um, and that word will be our word to work with. So the same with the fish will be, the, the word is dog, the word is book, whatever it is, and then you work on that. Um, if you have a problem or challenge in the organization, um, using it many times in different ways, but I'm asking people to write solutions for things that they've solved, and then we're putting them all together and we push ourselves to use those solutions for the problem that we have right now. Um, it brings up a lot of funny things, but really also good solutions that we didn't think about. Um, write a six word, word story, just like to open your meeting for some things, just an exercise. Um, and then if you can go to the next slide, um, there are two examples for drawing that people can just kind of work with of creating something out of that or their next page is having 30 circles that um, push ourselves to create some 
um, logic of those objects and um, it's not about the quantity but really about the quality so letting people work on that um, and you can go ahead and read that later um, that's pretty much it I'm glad that you all joined um, and wishing you yeah thank you all so much I put in the next upcoming um, workshops they're all on the Hebrew College Matarot website but I want to jump through the screen and hug Yafit for taking the time and for doing this. I think it's a, it's a topic that we don't often think about and we really need to, you know, Thank in you. order to keep up with all of the trends out there um, and to meet the needs of our stakeholders and ourselves, really, really important. So I thank you, Yafit, so much. And I look forward to seeing everybody at future sessions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Stop recording. Yeah, that went by so fast. Yeah, I stopped. I'm stopping.